Oh my word, you actually came back for episode four of Trucking Safety with Sam Watts. Thank you very much. I am Sam Watts. In case you didn't uh, put that together, probably should have. You know, it's just the one guy with the one name in the title. But hey, I will forgive you because that is what I'm all about. All about forgiveness. As long as you listen to Trucking Safety with Sam Watts. Thank you very much. I really do appreciate that. I'll probably say that for every episode that I do because I really do believe it. In all honesty, there are uh, 8.7 quadrillion podcasts out there. And the fact that you decide to take a chance and listen to me or actually be like a veteran listener and you have listened to everything I have done. uh, God bless you guys. Okay, thank you very much. I am truly humbled. I really do appreciate all that you got, all the support you've given me and is what keeps me coming back every week is knowing that uh, I've gotten emails and I've got comments and messages saying, you know, that you actually like what I'm doing. Awesome. Thank you very much. So we are back. Episode four of Trucking Safety, the podcast where we talk about trucking and we talk about safety and how the two worlds combine to, you know, actually help out the, the industry. And the reason I started this podcast was just because a lot of people don't really understand safety or they, they understand just a little bit enough, like like I was a couple of years ago, where I always say, I, was, I knew enough about safety to be dangerous with it, okay? I knew what we should be doing. I didn't exactly know why we should be doing that. And quite frankly, I was still missing a lot of the in-between. Like, okay, we, you know, I knew enough about that to where we would run the trucks, but I didn't know why we ran them that way. And I didn't really know the complications or the implications, I should say, of what would happen if we ever got caught doing what we were doing. Hey, if you can get by running an entire load under personal conveyance, yay, rah, rah. Okay, let's keep doing that. Uh, And I only say that because I one time was in charge of a driver who ran PC everywhere. And I thought, hey, he's not getting caught. Like, let's just keep it going. All right. He's making great time. We're making great money. Let's not, you know, screw any of this good stuff up. But I didn't understand the implications that would potentially come with doing that kind of stuff. And now I do. And that's why I started this podcast so that I can tell you guys exactly why we need to be safe, why trucking safety is a is a big deal in the trucking industry and how you can do it uh, to your advantage, quite frankly, because if you understand the rules of safety, you can really uh, do a lot in trucking and not have to keep looking over your shoulder going, am I going to get caught? What's going to be the fine for this? You know, things like that, because That's not really a way to run a trucking company. You don't want to be playing with fire while you're running a company. So that is why I set up this podcast. That is why hopefully you're listening or maybe you're just like, man, this is a podcast about trucking. Why? Let's let's give it a shot here. So anyways, regardless, whatever you're doing, thank you very much for listening. We do have a sponsor with the uh, with the show, Ewing Safety and Industrial. Listen, here's the deal. You need safety equipment, you need just tools, you need anything to get the job done. You need to go to Ewing Safety, okay? EwingSafety.com, that's E-W-I-N-G Safety.com, okay? They will hook you up with anything that you need. And the nice thing about it is that it's not a big box store. It's not a face... Uh, a faceless company that you don't know what you're dealing with. Okay. They're a small company. They're a small business. They're right in Morris, Illinois. They're doing fantastic things and they can compete with the best of them. Okay. Let here's a, here's a quick story. Okay. I needed some crowbars. Okay. I went to the big box store. They were expensive. I called Katie over at Ewing safety. I said, Hey, what do you got? Can you help me out with something? She came in and the, and the price was absolutely fantastic. So I said, sold. Okay. We're going to go with you, Katie. Um, and so we did, and we got a whole bunch of uh, crowbars. In fact, they came on a truck. I started getting phone calls from the guys at the shop saying, you, did you really actually order pallets of crowbars? And I said, yes, I did. And I got them for a great price at Ewing safety and industrial. So go check them out. Ewingsafety.com, Ewingsafety.com for all your stuff for, for anything you need. Okay. Seriously, their, their catalogs are like eight inches thick. Okay. Maybe not quite. Don't quote me on that. I'm not even sure if my fingers can go eight inches, but thick catalog. They got everything you need. Ewing safety. Thank you very much for sponsoring the podcast. So like I said before, there's a lot of people that, that know about safety, but they don't really know why 
safety is really a thing in the trucking industry. And I know that kind of sounds stupid and crazy, but I've literally had people tell me they don't know why the safety departments exist because they just kind of get in the way of making money. Now, I get that mindset, but if that is your mindset, you really need to change, okay? Because you, safety is important with a lot of things when it comes to trucking. There's some obvious ones, and then there's maybe some not obvious ones. So I wanted to take a couple minutes today on this podcast and tell you exactly why safety matters, okay? That's kind of the, the, the baseline. Now, if you've listened to my other podcasts that we've done so far, you'll know that I'm kind of setting a baseline here, okay? I'm kind of pouring a foundation of safety. Like, why should we know safety? What should we know about safety? Uh, Who should we know in the safety world? Me, that's who you should know. Uh, But I'm trying to kind of form a, a foundation here on safety so that we can eventually build on top of that. Because quite frankly, if you know like little things here and there about safety, it really doesn't mean that much to you because you don't have a foundation. You don't know why we should be doing this. You don't know how we should be doing this. So that is what I've been trying to do over the last couple podcasts and including this one is building that foundation of safety because that is what ultimately your safety program should be built on is you should have a foundation for it. Like any good structure out there, you got to start with the footings and the concrete and all that. And then you can build, you know, if, 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 if you built a house on dirt it's not going to stand very well. But if you build a house on concrete and a firm foundation, that's when you can start building on top of it. And the same thing goes with safety. So why should we care about safety? What, what should we be doing in safety? That is what we are answering. So today I just, I had a couple things, couple ideas of why you should care about safety in the trucking industry, okay? So number one, you should care about the safety or the safety department and you should be conscious of the safety department in the trucking industry because this is actually a very dangerous industry. And I don't say that to, you know, kind of boost ourselves up like, hey, we're doing dangerous work. We really are. Okay. And the trucking industry is a very dangerous industry. We have massive pieces of equipment on the road that is pulling 80,000 pounds, sometimes even more. And we're sending them down the road into public spaces at 75 miles an hour. Maybe you're governed, maybe you're back at 65 or 68, or if you're one of those big carriers, you might be governed at 62, which I think is actually a safety hazard as well, but we're not going to get into that right now. But we are, we are working in a very dangerous industry. And I know a lot of people complain that, oh, we are overregulated and there might be some cases for that. But at the same time, again, we are, we are loading a lot of equipment or, or a lot of, we're loading a lot of product onto equipment and then saying, go out with the general public and drive away. Okay. So we're putting, like I said, millions of millions of dollars worth of, of product on this, on these trucks and trailers. So we work in a very dangerous industry. Okay. When a semi truck crashes, like if they get into a very big crash, there is usually loss of life with it, okay? And, and that's, that's ultimately what we don't want to have happen in this thing. So you should really care about your safety department because you are a very dangerous entity. <laughs> and, and what we are trying to do is mitigate the risk that comes with running a trucking company. That's ultimately what the safety department does is we are trying to make sure that we follow the regulations that have been put in place because majority of them are good regulations. And I know that might be like a curse word to some people, but a majority of the regulations are good and they're set up so that we are safer. Okay. There's some that are questionable. Majority of them are good. So that is why number one reason we work in a very dangerous industry and there needs to be someone who monitors those regulations for trucking companies. If we just said, load them up and send them out and get there, we are just opening ourselves up to a lot of potential dangers and a lot of potential accidents and things like that. Um, and so one thing we need to make sure why safety matters is because we are, are really ultimately a very dangerous industry that needs somebody to kind of keep an eye on driver behavior, driver speed, uh, driver uh, load securement, things like that. Okay. So number two, why you should care about safety. Uh, if you don't and you run in an unsafe manner, you will eventually get caught. 
Okay. You will eventually do something that'll get you caught and could end in very bad uh, consequences for you. So a lot of times, and I, I get a lot of drivers that will say, I, you know, I did something. Let's, let's just take the log book, for example. So a driver will go out, he'll drive past his 11 hours, he'll work past his 14 hours, he'll do something that is against the rules. <clears throat> and he won't really think too much of it because, hey, he didn't get caught. Okay, that first off, that's a really bad mindset. You know, if, if you're breaking rules only because you didn't, you didn't get caught. The truth is, yes, okay, you, you might not get caught for something. You, you can maybe drive 24 hours and, you know, then shut her down and you might not get caught. But here's the problem. It's not necessarily that day that we're worried about. First off, if DOT auditors, things like that come in and take a look, they're looking for patterns. Okay. And if you're someone who habitually ignores the rules that have been set out for you, you're going to have this pattern of, of insubordination, basically, that auditors are going to see right away. And that's what's going to get you caught. And you say, well, I'm not getting audited. I really don't have to worry about that. You never know when you're going to get audited, okay? Because here's the deal. Audits usually happen. And now there's there's different ways that it happens, you know, but typically an audit will come in either at the end of your first year of your MC or if you get into an accident. Now, here's a bad situation. You get into an accident, DOT, the troopers, lawyers will go back and they'll look at previous logs. Okay. And if your logs are bad, you're going to be in big trouble. Okay. And there's absolutely no way for you to know when you're going to get looked at because you have absolutely no clue today. If you're going to wake up and get into an accident, whether it's your fault or not, you have no clue what's going to happen today. So if you get into an accident or one of your drivers gets into an accident, you better believe that they're going to start looking at previous logs and you go, Hey, I didn't get caught with this, you know, uh, six weeks ago, you're going to get caught with it. Now lawyers are very good right now at what they do. When it comes to these semi truck crashes, lawyers know exactly what to look for and they know how to find it. Even if sometimes it's not there, they still know what they're looking for and how to find it. So you got to be extremely careful because if something pops up and your driver gets into an accident, that's their fault, especially you better believe lawyers are going to come in and they're going to find all that stuff that you didn't get caught for before. Okay. So you should want to run your hours of service. Well, just because that's what you do. That is part of your job. But if you need some scare tactics behind it, this is it, okay? If you ever were to get into an accident, they're gonna look at your logs and they're gonna find stuff if that you did wrong and they are going to hold it against you. And not just the driver, okay? If you're a dispatcher or an operations manager or a safety person and you know that one of your drivers is doing something wrong and you don't do a thing about it, they're gonna come after you as well, okay? So again, not trying to scare you, but this is the reality of it. If you are knowingly going against the rules and just doing whatever you want, you might not get caught on the day you do it, but there is a good chance that you're going to get caught doing it, especially if you're violating HOS rules, because chances are you're not really paying attention when you're driving anyways. So you're probably not a very attentive driver. You're probably more open to having accidents. And when you do, that's when you're going to be in big trouble. Okay. So the reason safety matters is this, in this thing is because you're driving dangerous equipment and you might not you might not get caught right away but you will eventually if you are doing something wrong habitually you're going to get caught now the people who accidentally drive over 5 minutes cuz they had a hard time finding parking that's not a major concern it's the people that know what they're doing and they're doing it wrong and they they are knowingly doing that did i make sense on that that might have been a little tongue of twister People who knowingly are doing things wrong, they're the ones that are going to get caught. So it's best to just weed those drivers out right away, get them off your fleet. That way you don't have to worry about it. Okay. So the other thing is you should matter. Or you should care about safety because along with safety, you hear the word compliance a lot. And if you don't keep up with your compliance, you are literally playing with fire. Like I said before. It's no fun running a business when you're playing with fire. And if you are not keeping up on your compliance, you're not keeping up on your driver qualification files, you're not keeping up on your permits, you're not keeping up on your licensing. If you do that for too long, you will get in major trouble by the DOT, okay? 
compliance is a big piece and it's a lot of dates to remember and it's it's a lot of paperwork it's a lot of busy work and a lot of people don't maybe like it because it just kind of bogs you down but it is crucial in running your company if you don't keep up with compliance then uh, you're going to get audited eventually because you're going to have a high enough score because you're not going to have proper permits on the road. Your drivers are going to have wrong paperwork. Like it's eventually going to keep catch up with you. And if you don't have the right compliance pieces in, in place there, you're going to have an issue and, and DOT might come in and either downgrade you to a conditional rating, which means, eh, that's not good. You're kind of in no man's land, kind of a purgatory, or you're going to get non-satisfactory rating, which means kind of game over. Okay, there are some ways to get around that or get through it, but it's kind of game over. And even getting put in conditional, now all of a sudden, uh, if you run broker loads, brokers are going to look at that conditional rating and go, I don't know if we want to work with these people. They, they don't seem to have safety at top of mind. And ultimately, brokers and customers want their product to get to the final destination safely. And if you've proven that you're not a very safe company, they might not work with you. A lot of the big brokers, if you get thrown in conditional rating, mm -mm, they don't look at you anymore. Uh, also insurance. Okay. If you get put in conditional rating with insurance or for, uh, um, for your performance, insurance companies might not insure you. Or if they do, if you get lucky and they do insure you, your premiums are going to be sky high. Okay. So make sure that with, when it comes to safety and compliance, that you stay on top of that, because if you don't, you could get downgraded as a company in your safety rating. And that, that'd be a big deal. You want to stay satisfactory. You, you get to conditional, things get hard. You get to unsatisfactory, game over, okay? So keep up with your compliance, keep up with your safety for all that reasons. And then number four, last one, and then we'll, we'll wrap this thing up here. Um, it's important to concentrate on safety. It's important to keep safety top of mind because like I said, with insurance, if, if you have uh, good insurance, there's things called subrogation. So this is where safety can actually help you if you keep safety in mind. Uh, because if you get into an accident and it's not your fault, insurance companies can subrogate that. So you can actually go and collect money from the company that hits you. Like they'll pay for it. But if you don't pay attention to your safety, you let that kind of fall by the wayside, then you're not, then if you get into an accident and you don't have somebody that's actively watching that stuff, there's a really good chance you're going to leave a lot of money on the table and you're going to end up having to pay for the repairs on your own, which you don't want. It wasn't your fault. You were just in the wrong place, wrong time. These guys hit you. They should have to pay for it. If you don't have someone watching that though, you probably won't go after that other company because it is kind of a hassle. Okay. Now all of a sudden you're dealing with other company insurance. First off, you got to figure out who their insurance company is. Secondly, you got to contact them. You got to get through all the paperwork, the red tape, all that stuff. Those big insurance companies, they are set up with so many layers so that you just get frustrated and give up and go home. Okay. So, it's important to keep someone in, in in looking at the safety piece when it comes to insurance stuff because if you ever were to get into an accident that wasn't your fault, they'll go after them, okay? You need to have someone that will work with your insurance company so that your insurance company could go running after and do what's called subrogation so that you can get paid for if you were ever in the wrong place at the wrong time. Now, there is other things that come with safety and why it's important. And I've just touched on a couple of them. There's plenty more that we'll probably get into later on, but these are just a couple of why safety is important and why you should pay attention to safety. Okay. If you have any questions about this or comments or whatever, feel free to reach out to me, Sam at Watsman.com. And I'd be more than happy to go over some other stuff with you when it comes to this, but this is just a couple things why you should keep an eye on safety, why it's important. And um, again, if you have questions, let me know. That's it for episode four. I really appreciate you guys watching. Uh, we're going to continue on this foundation piece, uh, and we're just going to keep building on that until you guys are all safety experts when it's all said and done. But until then, I want you guys to drive safe out there, and I'll see you again next week.